Ooh, <laughs> this is exciting. I feel like Madonna. <laughs> there we go. Um, we're just putting on the live feed and there will be a few people joining us later on. Um, so first of all, um, I am beyond excited to welcome you all here. So I can introduce you to our new brand, Clara. My name is uh, Dr. Emma Craythorne and I'm a consultant dermatologist. I absolutely love the skin. I've spent my entire working life dedicated to the skin and learning about it. So I work as a consultant dermatologist at Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital, where I've been for the last 15 years. I also sit and work hidden away in the, in the laboratory working on skin research. And then you'll also find me completely out there on television as well. I have um, two television series that go out in 100 countries around the world. What I'd like to tell you now is something that's based in the deepest of science. This is not said to you on a whim. This is said to you as something that we've researched for the last 20 years. It's based on thousands of patient experiences, and this is based on deep clinical knowledge of how the skin can work. Now, what I'd like to think about first of all is why do people seek out skincare routines? I mean, you'll know this better than I do, but why do people seek them out? Well, it's really for two reasons. Number one, we want to think about protecting our skin. The first thing is we protect it from sun damage, we protect it from oxidative damage, and we protect it from everyday pollution and just our own metabolic being. We age and that changes how our skin functions. The next thing that some people will seek out skincare routines for is because they already have a problem. So they might have some acne, they might have pores they don't like, they might have um, dull skin, they, they might have rosacea, they might have bits of pigmentation. So that's the second reason why people will seek out a skincare routine. So first of all, you might be trying to repair something, or second of all, you might be trying to prevent damage in the future. But I have discovered two fundamental problems with this. There is so much noise, first of all. There is noise from very well-meaning sources of YouTubers and Instagram and blogs and dermatologists and non-skin care experts. There is so much information and it's all out there with the very best of intention, but it is incredibly confusing. And it's also working on the assumption that people actually understand their skin in the first place. So you've got all of this noise giving you all of this information, but if you don't understand your skin, well then, um, what information do you take? You know, wh what are you meant to do to try and improve things if you don't really understand what your skin is? So the first problem is that consumers are really expected to know what their skin is and how it behaves. And it's typically based on these four skin types where people used to think we've got oily skin, dry skin, combination skin. Well, these are just marketing terms. This is not how a dermatologist will think about your skin. And to be honest, it's probably not how you think about your skin either. You're thinking about your skin in terms of, hmm, why every month am I getting these spots here? Like, why does that happen? Or why whenever I am in the sunshine, am I getting these areas of pigmentation? It's not how you think about your skin, and it's not how a dermatologist thinks about your skin. And actually, there was a study done that showed that if you even tried to fall into these four marketing terms, 70% of people get it wrong. So how, how are you meant to then navigate this market? So you've got all the noise, and you've got all the products, and there's increasing products. So how do you navigate them? The second problem is that even if you seek out many of these over-the-counter products, they're not actually really going to do the job that you want it to do. So I say this based on 20 years clinical experience. People will turn up in my office and they have spent thousands and thousands of pounds on many promises and hopes to get rid of the melasma they have on their face or the pigmentation or 
to reduce fine lines and wrinkles with the hope that it's going to do that. But actually, it doesn't. These are not strong enough ingredients to do that. So these are the two problems. Number one, people don't really know their skin. And number two, once you know your skin, mostly in order to achieve those skin goals, you probably need a little bit more than what you can just get over the counter. So this is the point I want to introduce you to Clara. Um, and this really is the skincare of the future, where we put analyzing your skin at the very, very top of it. And then after that, you will then have the most maximally effective treatment. And then following that, you've actually got the support and care of a dermatology clinic. They're on your side, okay? And I also put in here care for the planet because actually it's so important whenever we think about the absolute waste in skincare where people don't understand their skin. So they will go in and buy a whole heap of stuff and then it sits in the bottom of their cupboard and no one ever uses it. And the environmental waste in terms of plastics and resources just to make that stuff that nobody can actually use really needs to be questioned and thought about more properly. So this is where if you understand your skin and you understand the right ingredients and skincare routine for you, then you're going to stick with it. You will actually get the results that you want to get. And in a way, you're not wasting your time, you're not wasting your money, and you're not wasting really important environmental resources. So question, how do you actually understand your skin? You know, I don't expect everybody to spend six years at medical school, five years as a junior doctor, five years studying dermatology, 13 years as a consultant dermatologist, just to go, okay, I got it now, I know what my skin is like. So I want to try and help you think about your skin, how a dermatologist would in a fairly straightforward way. And we've come up with the concept of skin sizes. Now, Everyone has a dress size and a shoe size, and it certainly narrows down your options when you go shopping. And in the same way, we can think about the skin in that manner also. So your skin size is a complex interplay of your genetics and what you've done to the skin, so your environmental exposure. So how your skin is made and what you've done to it over time. And that is your skin size. And everyone will fit into one of these 12 skin sizes. And that then really does narrow down and help you navigate information that's given to you, as well as information, the actual skincare market that's around you. And this really is how a dermatologist thinks. We don't think it's your skin just oily or dry or combination. We think about it in terms of how effective is this person's skin barrier when we want to give them things. We think about how much the, the melanocytes, these pigment cells, are producing melanin and how reactive they are. We think about how um, effective the sebaceous gland is in producing lovely sebum that's great for some and problematic for others. And we also want to think about the collagen. You know, this is really important when we think about early aging and trying to protect against fine lines and wrinkles. Um, these are, the, these are the, the elements of the skin that we as dermatologists will think about when we're prescribing skincare routines. And everyone fits into these 12 skin sizes. So this is an example of what this will look like. Um, you'll get a chance to do this later on so you can work out what your own skin size is. Um, but you will be based around a little spider gram like this. And then from then, we can then work out the perfect skincare routine for you because we know if you're somebody who's really all the way over here, we want to make sure that we're giving you something that makes sure your pores aren't blocked, you're able to clear that sebum effectively. And equally, if you're somebody who has a pretty poor skin barrier, even if you're oily, then you need to get loads of protection in there. So there, everything has a complex interplay with each other. Once you know what your skin size is, well, then you're able to come up with the most perfect, ultimate, essentially, cream that's full of all the things that you need to treat your skin. So that can either be in terms of achieving the skin goals, which might be to improve your um, rosacea tendencies or acne tendencies or pigmentation issues or it might be because you really want to preserve the youthfulness appearance of the skin, increase skin glow, reduce fine lines, wrinkles 
And this is where your special comes into it. It's made for you with this complex um, group of ingredients. So this is our power trilogy that we live by when formulating these um, the special. And it's a combination of the ingredients and the dose and the base. And I'll explain now why this is important. Now, first of all, we like to use ingredients that have the very best evidence. So as dermatologists, when we see a skincare issue or a, diag a diagnosing a problem or trying to do preventative care, there are certain ingredients that are regarded as the gold standard to achieve that. And they're based on decades of research, not just a whim, not just small laboratory studies or tiny little quippy studies. These are drugs that have FDA approval for that indication or are guideline standard. So these are just some of the ingredients that would feature in our, in our special. Um, and many of these you will see and know here and consider as the gold standard. Now, as dermatologists, we actually have all of these ingredients and they're often in proprietary forms. Um, but the problem with many of the proprietary forms are that they're a little bit boring to use. They're often mixed with some of ingredients that might not necessarily suit a certain skin size. So therefore, making it specific and special for that person means that somebody who might not have been able to use tretinoin, for example, actually can now with um, this combination. So I know that you're all um, very well familiar with skincare because that's why you're here and everyone online is as well. Um, so I just want to probably highlight one of these. I could obviously go through all of them, but you don't have five hours. Um, so we'll pick out the group of tretinoin, which is the retinoid. So when we think about retinoids, they are the gold standard treatment for many conditions. So if you have acne, it's considered the gold standard treatment. If you have photo damage, it has an FDA license to treat it. It's the um, some retinoids do. Um, and actually, if you have rosacea, which often people would shy away from using a retinoid, we know that rose, um, retinoids to treat rosacea is probably one of the best things that we can do to treat things like um, the flares of unredness of rosacea. But from a beauty perspective, what else it can do in terms of increasing your skin glow, um, improving fine lines and wrinkles, unclogging your pores, it's... Um, it's also considered to be the gold standard. This is a, a study that, that looks at one of the retinoids. In fact, this is the retinoid that is considered um, the tret retinoic acid, and this is the one that has the FDA license. Now, I'm just going to, I'll not go through this in the huge details, but this is the one that received the FDA, this study was one that was part of the FDA study approval for it for photo damage. So, photo damage, think skin aging, fine lines, wrinkles, all the things that you, you tend to want to improve from that perspective. So, this is untreated skin, and this is the treated skin. Now, what you're seeing at the very top is what's called the stratum corneum. This is all the dead skin cells. And as we age, that skin cell turnover gets less and less. So you get it building up at the top. And that's why often if you look at somebody who is um, older, then their skin doesn't tend to have quite the same glow because as the light hits off this, it scatters it in lots of different ways. Um, in somebody who has treated skin, you can see this is much more compact, so the light reflects differently. That's just one element of it. Another is how organized the epidermis is. So this is the epidermis here, and this actually thickens up with use of a retinoic acid, and that's why the skin becomes stronger, the skin barrier becomes stronger, and that's why it's very effective for conditions like rosacea. And then with time, and I really mean with time, it has to be more than nine months, you'll start to see changes in the top part here of the dermis, and that's where you get the increased collagen laid down. So that's where it helps with fine lines and wrinkles. This is not a quick process. This is a slow process that gradually with time improves that. Um, and then this was just a study that pretty much looked at the comparator, which I'll not go through in so many details, but essentially the tretinoin wins out. Now, that is the, um, the ingredient. So retinoid, you remember, is a blanket term with all lots of ones falling underneath. So here is one of the kind of retinoid myths, really. When we think about um, tretinoin or retinoic acid, this is the most active form of it. 
Then you've got the conversions that come down, and each part of this has to be, the skin has to work hard to convert it to the next stage. So retinol is probably the next one down from retinoic acid, retinol again, and then down here is where all the retinoid esters are. Now, it's very difficult to say how much stronger retinoic acid is compared to these two. And if you look in lots of online features, it will often say, oh, it's 10 times, it's 20 times. But the best paper that I could find that actually showed comparator for collagen and showed comparators for um, epidermal thickness is probably retinol is about 41 times less strong. I mean, that is a big, big difference. And also, the papers I showed you to show that improvement, this is only with the retinoic acid. It's the only one that has the license to do those things, not the rest of them. So when we think about the ingredient, if you're going to bother to put it on to get the things that you want to get, well, you probably want to put on the right ingredient. The next thing to think about is the dose. So, okay, you've got the right ingredient. It looks really good on your packaging. Um, but if you don't have the right dose, well, again, it's not going to do the job that you want it to do. So this is um, comparing two different strengths of tretinoin, retinoic acid. Down here is no sun damage at all. This is like a little baby's bottom. And then up here is becomes more and more photo damaged. Now, these are the charts. This one here shows the stronger retinoid, the retinoic acid at 0.05. And this is showing it at 0.01. And this, well, that's just the vehicle or the base that it's carried in. If you follow that all the way down, there's actually very little difference between 0.01% retinoic acid and the base. In fact, there's hardly anything at all. But when you start to use the correct dose of a retinoid, of retinoic acid, well, that's when you start to see the difference. And that's whenever you get these 27% reduction in fine wrinkling, 37% reduction in mottling. So it's not enough to have the right ingredient. It has to be also the right dose. Which then brings me back to that last slide I talked to you about. So with the retinols that are 41 times less strong than this retinoic acid, you've got to think about whether that's going to be effective much at all. Oh. And then we're going to think about the base, because that's the thing that holds everything together. And this is really important because the base is going to be optimized for whatever your skin size was. This means that people who previously perhaps couldn't use, and I'm just sticking with the retinoid theme here, people who perhaps previously couldn't use retinoid, if that base is optimized to suit their skin, well, actually, you can then start to use retinoic acid to be driven into the skin. You also need to have something that's going to look really nice and feel really nice, and you just get excited to use it. So that is the job of the base. So these are an example of what our skin sizes are. So say you're somebody who had uh, prone to rosacea. We've taken out the skin sizes here. So these are prone to rosacea. Um, actually, if you're then able to deliver that retinoic acid without fragrances in it, which might irritate some, um, deliver it without phenoxyethanol, which might irritate some, then you're actually, and really nourish it with lots of cholesterol and squalenes and hyaluronic acid. Actually, you can then start to deliver retinoic acid to these very sensitive patients. And equally, somebody who's prone to acne, which again, you can discern from your skin size, if you're able to deliver it in a way that's going to help drive that in a bit more without irritating the skin, or when we think about people who have hormonally driven acne, so you start to get your spots at the end of the month, we know that after ovulation, you're then going to start to make a bit more sebum where we'll get clogged. So if you've got a base that is able to, at the end of the month, help to facilitate that clearance a bit more, well, that will also help out with that part of the cycle. And then also people with menopausal skin, the skin barrier completely changes at perimenopausal and after the menopause. It completely changes. And you have a skin barrier that's depleted of cholesterol and other ceramides. So if you're then able to deliver these slightly harsher ingredients in a base that's loaded with this lovely mixture of cholesterol-free fatty acids and ceramides, people will tolerate it better. This is a study that we did looking at just our retinoids, um, the retinoic acid. So this is a 
this is all the rest. And these are the adverse events that tend to occur when people use a prescription grade retinoid. So you'll get a bit of scaling, increase in redness, and notice skin flares. And that's typically for people who well, you get a big flare of your acne, often because the skin barrier is a bit disrupted, needing to stop and patchy dryness of the skin. And then we compare this whenever we optimize it in a base that's suited for the skin. You can see this is marked all the way, all the way across the board. So, um, if you have this ingredients, dose, and base power trilogy just right, it's actually considered to be almost the ultimate night cream. And that was said to me by one of the people who, who's using our, one of our customers who's using that, that now. And that, although we've only been going for a very short period of time, it's really incredibly encouraging the responses that we're getting from all our social media channels and from, from emails um, and reviews to us. And the last part of it is, is actually care, because when we think about care, people will stop using skincare because they either don't have the support, they don't really understand what's happening, um, or they might stop their skin for some other reason and attribute that to the skin, the, the, the product they've been using. So actually having somebody to talk to and talk them through what's happening with their skin is probably the most important thing to sustain a, a, a successful skincare routine. So we are all consultant dermatologists um, and specialist dermatology nurses, and we all work incredibly closely together. Some of these faces you'll know. You'll know the nurses from our television shows, um, and many of you know Christina, who's also here today. Um, so when we think about skincare, additionally in terms of care, and I touched on this at the beginning in terms of care for the planet, it really is time to say, goodbye to many of the wasteful things that we use. If you want your skincare to do something, well, you have to do the right thing. Just one thing, but it just needs to be the right thing. Um, and then in order to try and be as resourceful as possible, we have made these gorgeous um, glass bottles um, and everything about it is completely recyclable. Um, but the inside of it is a cartridge that comes to you every single month with your increasing changes or dosages depending on what the weather is or what, the, what your new skincare goals are. And all of this comes through in completely recyclable packaging and every part of it can be recycled. So in terms of how we can um, try and ensure that we are being as waste less as possible, um, we've looked into every step of that. This is also a cruelty-free, completely product. Um, and then lastly, um, another aspect of care is really going back into the dermatology community. In terms of our, our research, we only know what's going to be effective and useful for skincare whenever people do really good clinical trials on people. And this can give us robust, completely unbiased evidence. So a large proportion of what we do actually is going back into dermatology research to further better this for new skincare routines, new skincare effective treatments for the future. So somebody once said it's like having a dermatologist in your pocket, which I also really quite liked. So if you can't come and see us in our building here, well then you can come and see us online right here. So I just want to give a quick recap of um, what we've talked about. And it's really about thinking about your skin like a dermatologist would. So the first part is really understanding your skin. So the waste is minimized and you're going to get the effective skincare goals achieved that you want to. After that, you get the clearer special, and that is all the ingredients you need to achieve those goals in the best possible way. You get your ongoing care from a personal dermatology team, which has got numerous things uh, advantage to it because it's care for you, care for ongoing research, care in terms of wastelessness, um, and also ongoing shared learning because our experience from our consumers is all fed back in. So, for example, if somebody finds a good skin size SPF that they like, well, that will typically suit the rest of the people within that skin size. So this is a community um, we're building as well. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to all of this and welcome to Clara. And I'd be happy to take any questions you might have.